Good morning, folks. Hey, look who we got with us. Carson's going on vacation. Melinda's going fishing in Carson's place today. Loving life with the old fishermen on Lake Murray. We're going to be flood of, flood of spoon fishing out on Lake Murray. Hopefully, I can get a big one on uh, Melinda's line and she can have her a good time. Loving life with the old fishermen. Go with us today. We're going to be fishing with the boy ducket and the flutter jack. Uh, flutter spoons. Hey, let's see what we can do on Lake Murray. And uh, hey, proud to have Melinda with me. We're going to have a good time. Let's go fish and see what we can do. God bless. folks hey hey we at lake murray we got melinda in the boat and she's anxious wanting to know if there's a fish under me already and i ain't even stopped good yet but anyhow we out here we're gonna try to get on some stripers hopefully who knows we're gonna keep looking until we find them hopefully thanks for being with us my name is steve come this is melinda krill and we are gonna be catching i hope some stripers with a flutter jack flutter spoon and a boy duck it flood a spoon here today. And all we're doing, we're dropping it down to the bottom. We're pushing our little button on our reel and letting it go down. And uh, you kind of kind of watch that, Melinda. Don't pull it, it up into the, there you go. Anyhow, we're gonna beat the boat and see if we can stir something up. We don't know whether there's any fish in here or not, but we're gonna give it a shot. See if we can get one going. Lake Murray, loving life with Melinda Krill and the old fisherman. She's ready to catch one already, see. She's probably gonna be like Carson, a little bit anxious. If I don't catch one in two, three seconds, she's probably gonna get wanting to move like Carson does. Carson gets that from his mama, I think. But we don't know. Maybe more than two or three seconds. <laughs> she's gonna give me a minute. I'll give you 10 seconds. <laughs> there might not be a fish in this creek, but we gotta look. We're gonna hit creeks, is what we're gonna hit this morning, until we stir something up. And it's a lot of work reeling this thing in. It weighs about an ounce and a quarter, an ounce and an eighth, somewhere along in there, over an ounce. It's a, uh, the flutter spoon is a five inch plus. And when I say plus, some of them are a little bit bigger than others. Uh, but you can use the eight inch flutter spoon or you can use the, uh, a three and a half inch flutter spoon, but I like the mid range one, the five inch, the best. But uh, hey, right now, I done pulled two or three times and I ain't seeing nothing, and that ain't a good sign. Usually these stripers, as you start pulling it in, they start stirring up, if they're there. Now, what we're gonna do is work down this creek, and if we don't catch nothing in this ditch, we're going to another ditch. Uh, and hopefully, we get some. Sometimes they push back up into the back of the creek, sometimes they're not. They out in the mouth of the creeks. Woo! Yeah, he was close. What is that? That's a striper. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, Here, I don't even know if the camera's on. Give me your rod. Look what Melinda's got. Hey. Look you, what you went up there running your mouth, look you ain't prepared. <laughs> Look what Melinda's got. Get in the game, get in the game. <laughs> she done got a fish and went haywire on me all of a sudden. <laughs> hey, we got a fish. Yeah, get back out and catch a dozen, you rascal, you. You catch yours too. You quit running that trap. <laughs> oh, they're tearing it up on the way down. All right, let's get another. You know it's more than one out there. That's a little one. We want one about four times that size. There you go. 
Linda's got one, y'all. I'm gonna turn the camera. Her camera's gone. You moving? Yeah. You When you go back to him, keep it tight because he'll pull that 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 spoon to pull loose. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Oh yeah, that's the kind we're looking for right there. Let's see how they going. Oh Lord, and your boy hot, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Look what she got, y'all. Look at that. Ain't that a pretty sight? He swallowed it too. Oh, he's got it. What? He's got it. That's a good one. Look at that. Huh? That's what I'm talking about, folks. That's I've got I'm... two. He has zero. Oh, yeah. She's whipping, man. I like it. I like a woman that can outfish your old fisherman. Tell you what now. He's swallowed. I know it. Dang it. All right. You got it? Yep. I don't know why her camera ain't working, but I got the other camera on her. Do my happy dance. Huh? Catch her nudding. Got him. <laughs> she gonna catch her nudding. Jesus. <laughs> he's a fighter. <laughs> oh, he's off. Uh oh, that happens a lot. God dog it. <laughs> that happens a lot. Uh. Right, huh. <laughs> Got nothing? They're just tearing me up. Good. Catch them. I'm playing with cameras and my Linda's catching for you. Hook it, baby. Oh, Getting on up in the daylight. You got a smart right here? I got us on spot lock. If I didn't have to worry about cameras, I could be catching for you. Cameras can be aggravating. Got none? No. Catch me one, Melinda. Let's see if we can get them going there. They like it at a slant. I can tell you that. So I need to pull the boat and get it slanted. They hit it a lot better with the line slant. Had a couple in there. It's like they fire up and catch a couple, you miss one and then they run out when the one missed. What happens? They do it a lot. It's like they put out a warning signal when you lose one. Well, at least you know how it feels. They laced in there like stove wood. They're about halfway between, well, they're about 20 foot and then 38 foot of water. So when we really buy them is when they're going to take it. They ain't hit. They here. They ain't hit. Yep, that's who it was. You're going over to that creek. That's all right. We already tested that creek. Good, 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 good. Get the net, she says. You hear her giving me orders, don't you? <laughs> yes, sir. That's a nice one. That's a real nice one. That's a good one. Let's get it back here. That's a good one, y'all. That's a real good. That's a real good fish. 
That's the kind we're looking for right there, folks. Oh, yeah. That's the kind we're looking for. Three to zero. Oh, yeah, she's wearing me out. I love it. Oh, you, want, you want to switch rides? No. Look at that, folks. Look what she got. Ow. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Calm down, boy. That's how it That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Right Taking too long. There you go. Look at this. She got a nice one. All right. Yeah, we got to show you off to that guy. <laughs> That's what we got. <laughs> All right. Let's get back here. See if we can get something else rolling. Let me catch them now. Get a mud. And I tell you, they all out there. Why they ain't biting this pig? This boom, I don't know. They're hitting that dog on the boy duck. Is what they're hitting. They ain't hitting the flutterjack. You horse that fish in like it wasn't nothing. That was a slab. He was fighting. That's what, was that cool. rod right there. You feel all the fight on it. There's a couple. Seems like they're back in the cold more. Back. Yeah, that's something. There you go. There you go. There you go. Look at her. She is, she is heck on wheels. You might need the net on him. <laughs> Don't horse him. Just take your time. Take your time. That Melinda's a fishing fool. Pumping, there you go. The drag might be done got loose. I don't know. Like he ain't coming. I see him. Oh yeah. He's a good one. He's another good one. He kind of crook back. You know called a crook back fish. Sweet down there, did he? Look at him. Look at him. Look at that. Look at that fish. Anyhow, look what Melinda's caught. Him in the bottom of the jaw. Yep, he hit at it. Yeah. Oh, gosh. In the house. Look at him, man. What's He's that? He's weird looking. He got hit when he was little, I reckon. Look at that. Huh? Look at that. Hey. Put him in the grease. Look at here. Look at him out of his misery. Look what we got here. Look what Melinda caught. She's tearing him up, y'all. She's tearing him up. Yeah, you put him out of his misery. Oh, my. Back out here and get them done, y'all. What y'all say? Alright. These cars have got some waffles in here one day. I mean waffles. Oh, there he is. Oh, my day is. Yeah, I finally got one, my goodness. Coming back towards you. Yeah. He's pulling though, I tell you that. Got him in the side of the head, I think. You got the camera on? Yeah. Yeah. Oh boy. Come on in here, big boy. Folks, hey, we didn't get but five today. Melinda caught four of them and I caught one. I was messing with the cameras about all the time she was catching fish. But, uh, hey, we're going to clean these uh, stripers for you. And then we're going to do a uh, uh, cooking video on how to cook stripers a little bit later on tonight. 
But uh, hey, we had a good day, loving life, and Melinda had a good time catching these uh, doggone stripers. Y'all see them? Uh, nicely catch. Hey, nice fish. Uh, three of them would have been keepers in a normal uh, day. But uh, three of them's over 21 inches. The other two kind of small. But hey, thanks for being with us. But I'm going to show you how I clean these stripers. We're going to fillet them up right now. Y'all bear with me. And, uh, and I'm going to show you again how I clean the stripers. Be right with you. I like to use uh, this little board to lay them on. Uh, lays good up here and works good off this stainless steel table here. And we like to use uh, from uh, uh, Northern Tools, I get these gloves. They got uh, a rubberized coat on one side. Uh, they're not waterproof or anything, but they kind of protect your hands while you're filleting. And uh, hey, folks, I'm going to show you right now how I clean stripers again. And then we're going to cook them later in beer batter this time. Beer batter. I always brush up my knife with a spoon. A couple times on each side to keep it sharp. We're using a Dexter knife. I like the Dexter 7-inch knife. I'm about wore this one out. Y'all can see it's about wore out. But we sharpen it up a little bit. Then we take a striper. And uh, we're going to lay one up there and show you how it's done. Now, old striper, he bleeds pretty good bit when you cut into him. So I hope that doesn't bother you. But I cut down right behind the head at a slant. Right there like that. And then I go out. Right against the backbone. Right on down the tail. And we end up with a nice fillet. Turn him over. I slant right against the head, up toward the head, the meat of the head, and right on down against the backbone. A little bit slow. I slow up, and I just keep the knife blade right above the backbone till it comes out like that right there. Okay? Now, I don't keep the backbone. You can, you can fry the backbones. But I don't keep the backbone on a striper much. But they work, they eat good. Do another one. And what we do is go right out again. Right against the backbone. Right on out the tail. What we do. Then I'll turn him over. Right down to 45 like that. Right on down by the bone. Right through the rib cage. Right on out the end. Now see that one there. Show you what he's eating. That's his stomach right there. I know a lot of people might not like to look at this, but that joker had a herring and a tread fin shad in him. So he's eating both, tread fin and herring. They didn't have want to bite today. I'll be honest with you. Did not want to bite. Now, you can spray off your work table if you get blood on it, which helps. And, okay, we're going to take that filet, and then I'm going to work in right around this rib cage here, right around the rib cage. I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope you can. And then, I like to go in and go halfway and out the tail, and then you go down in the front part and out. And you got a fillet right here. Okay. Then I like to trim red meat out. And I've said it quite a few times. I'll trim the red meat out. And any bones that stuck to it, got a little piece of bone on that one. Right on out. Kind of buckle the, the, the middle of it up, kind of push on the sides, and kind of pushes the middle up. And there you go. We got a uh, 
good looking piece of meat with red meat out and then I'll cut it and you got two pieces. See? Yeah. Two pieces. Alright, let's try that again. You can do it another way. You can go down right there where that rib cage comes out and then go out the tail and do it that way. I like to not go all the way down and that way it leaves a lot of that red meat against the uh, skin. Then I go down and back out on this part. And we're trying to red meat out. I like to fit to cook small pieces when I'm doing stripers. So I'll take that other piece that we, we chopped in and we'll chop it in too and make kind of like striper nuggets. That's what I like to do. Now let's get the red meat out of this one. See that? All right. <clears throat> Go down by the bone, right on to the end, turn the knife, work it down, work it around, and uh, if it goes to pop out, you got to start at the back and come back toward you. If it pops out the skin, sometimes it will, and so you got to kind of regroup and do it at another angle. All right, let's get the red meat. And on out. A little bit of red meat right here, ain't much. All right, we cut it in pieces. Nice piece of meat to eat. See that, pretty. We're gonna fry them in beer batter, I tell you. These fives just uh, is a good mess of fish, just enough for three people to eat. So it'd be Melinda, I, and Carson. Carson's coming off a of vacation. He's been on vacation with his daddy. And uh, I'm sure he'll be wanting to eat some of the old fishermen's fillets, trifles. Trey, I'm out the red meat. I'm showing you the way I like to do it. People like to use electric knives. They like to do it different ways and more power to you. This is just my way, the way I do it. I'm not trying to teach you anything different. I'm just giving you an idea. If you do it some different way, the way I do it, you might want to change. If you don't, that's okay too. Okay. We're going to cut chunks out of it. Hey, good eating right there. All right, folks, at this time, <clears throat> what I normally do is I got an old basket here, a fish frying basket, an old one. What I'll do is I'll rinse the fish off and put them in this old basket. What we got right there going to the frying pan thanks for watching hey we'll get back with you in the kitchen well hello folks the old fisherman back with you we inside now we're going to try to fry some of these fish we got two different beer batters uh you can use beer batter from uh louisiana beer batter what you do is you mix it up with some beer we're going to take some uh some ultra beer go and uh, mix with it and then we're going to cook them in corn oil now you can use peanut oil but i prefer the corn oil and 
Also, I like the house archery, beer batter, but all I could find was the tempura. So we're gonna try a little bit of tempura and, uh, and some in, in Louisiana. And, uh, and we're going to do completely different than what we did with the mustard. We're just going to mix the batter up, salt and pepper them, uh, and slosh them in the batter. And I'll show you all the, all the ingredients we use and uh, how we do it. we got them washed up. The fillets are washed up. Now I'm going to put uh, some uh, salt and pepper on them and uh, get ready to put them in the beer batter. All right, we're going to put the beer batter, the mixture, in a bowl. Is what we're gonna do. You see it, Louisiana, in a bowl. <laughs> then we're gonna mix the uh, beer with it. We get it to its kind of a good consistency. To it looks like this right here. You see in there? Good mixture. Now to show you the difference, we're going to do some in the tempura. And it says to mix water in it, cold water, but we're going to mix beer in it. So we got the mixture with the tempura. By the way, I want you to check this apron out. This is the last apron Miss Deborah made. And uh, I got it on. It's got the old fisherman on it with the old original casting out of the boat, of the old boat. All right, we got our fillets ready. They're salt and peppered up. We're gonna put them in Louisiana beer batter and let it drip off. Coat it good and just let it drip off. Okay, we're gonna lay it in the pan over here. Fish fillet in the batter. Cake it in the Drain it off real good. Lay it in the pan. I'm gonna show you the difference in the two batters. One of them's gonna have a little bit of hot, hotter taste than the uh, other. The uh, tempura is gonna be a little bit milder tasting. It's kind of the same way you do it with the mustard, only you're doing it with a beer batter and you're not putting any flour on it. That is your, your batter. Your flour is mixed in it. Okay, we're gonna do a couple now in the tempura. You see it a lot lighter looking. Will be, they'll turn out different, uh, a look, they'll be a lot lighter and a different taste. Right there you see them mixed up, ready to go. We're gonna take it over to the frying pan. It's getting hot enough, and we're gonna put it in the, see that? Okay, that's the tempura, that's the Louisiana. The McCormick's versus Louisiana. Y'all see them frying? Looking good. All right, looking good. See them frying? We'll flip them over. Because I'm doing it inside the house. It's not like it's in a, a deep pot on the outside. You just flip them over in here. Looks good, don't it? They're going to be delicious. Miss Deborah used to love that. She used to break the, the coating off of it, the crust off of it, and eat, and eat them in a bowl of butter, just like you eating crab meat, that white flaky meat from the striper. And we got us some french fries we're gonna cook with it also. Looking good. Shh. 
show you what it looks like. Look how white that meat is. See what I'm talking about? It's hot right now. But look how white and pretty that meat is. Right there. Beautiful looking. I tell you, it's, it just makes it so wonderful. Look at that baby, how pretty brown it is. Look at that. Ain't that pretty? Some of the pieces are thicker than others, so I'm letting them cook a little bit longer. Look here, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Look at this. Can't tell you how, how, how good that's going to be. Got to let it cool, though. Too hot. Look at that. Beautiful. Look at that beautiful piece of fish. Look how golden they are. You need to try sometime. It's kind of like fish and chips. This is more like fish and chips. Okay. Drop them over. Got a good cake of, uh, of uh, mixture on it. I'm going to drop them in. make room for one more piece well actually I got two more pieces I'll make room for it somehow but then uh, and there they cook now we're gonna go over here and taste this look at this you think that ain't nice oh my god mm. that is so so doggone good look at this mm. My. Can't beat it. No gamey taste. No red meat in it. It's just wonderful eating. Hey, hope you enjoyed it. And that's how I cook. Another way I cook uh, stripers is in the beer batter. God bless you. Thanks for being with us on another episode of Love and Life.